professors, distinguished guests, current fathers, brothers, and sisters. The present paper bases itself on the doctoral thesis that I defended in the University of Sorbonne, Paris, and in Antipicatric Gunari, in France. The thesis was entitled, Initiation Cartier, Salonis Sac de Toma, Unité de Logique et Théologie et Don de l'Ancien Bataille de Christi. In English, Christian initiation according to the Acts of Thomas, the liturgical and theological unity of the anointing baptism of Christ. First, 
Christian initiation of King Gundabad, his brother Khan, and the royal court explained in the chapters 24 to 27 of Acts of Thrones. Second narrative is Christian initiation of an unnamed woman, here of demonic possession, chapters 48 to 50. Narrative 3, Christian initiation of Mantonia and Narkia, chapters 122 and 121. Narrative 4, Christian initiation of the general Sifu, his wife and his daughter, chapters 131 to 133. Narrative 5, Christian initiation of the Prince Bizan and a couple of women, namely Thersia, Bizan, uh, the Queen and the Mother of Bizan, and Manasha, the wife of Bizan, chapters 150, 157, and 158. All these five distinct narratives, wherein the Church of Christian initiation was celebrated, are found in both versions, Syria and Greek. Now, the concept of Rushma, or Shragis, according to the Greek version. The concept of Rushma Shragis. To understand the specific meaning and signification of Rushma or Shragis in Acts of Thomas, let us first consider the various terms adjacent to them in Syria and in Greek, and Let's find out if any of them appear in the text of Acts of Thomas. Finally, we would also examine the content of the term Rushma Stragis in the five narratives of Christian initiation according to Thomas, Acts of Thomas. The terms adjacent to Rushma and Stragis. The translation generally rendered in English for Rushma is sign in French scene. In Syria, several terms are close to express the concept of sign. Atma, Rushma, Atta, Nisha, Taba, and Ramsa. In Greek, the terms that are close to expressing the concept of Sai are Shragis, Dactylios, Semeion, Stigma, Karekma, Karagnos, Karakter, Karaxis, Typos, etc. Now, the use of Rushma and Shragis in Acts of Thomas. Let us start with the Greek version of Acts of Thomas. A review of the Greek authors shows that the use of Shragis appear, appears under two modalities. First, in the context of the initiation rite, Shragis appears always in its singular form. Outside the liturgical context of the initiation rite, Shragis appears in its plural form to designate the seeds affixed on the doors in chapter 161 and 162. In the Syriac version, the term Rushma appears only in singular form, never in plural, and is found only in a context of initiation rite. It is Atma in its plural form that corresponds to the plural usage of Shragis in the Greek version of Tablets 161 and 62. This observation invites us to consider that the use of Rushma only in its singular form in the Syriac version may be having a specific meaning because the author or editor of that version had thought to use it neither in its plural form nor in any other context than the right of initiation. In the Greek version, this specific meaning may be also implied because the author consciously and always put Shragis in the singular when he speaks of initiation even if he did not find other terms than Shragis in plural in the case of chapter 161 and 162. What is the specificity and importance of the singular usage of Rushma and Shragis in the five narratives of initiation five? <coughs> when we compare the entire text of the two versions, Syriac and Greek of time, as of Thomas, we find that the occurrences of the substantive Rushma and Shragis appear in both versions. <coughs> Whereas, when we compare the verbal forms related to the root of these substantives, we find that the Syriac version has one verbal derivative in a Eucharistic context, while the Greek version has four derivatives of the same root of Shragis, and they are relatively rich in the first and the second relatives. Let us start with the Greek version and see the meaning and signification of Shragis and the verbal derivatives. Shragis. In the third, fourth, and fifth narratives, the substantive Shragis signifies the broad celebration of initiation rite, that is the giving of an oily baptism to Eucharist, because at the request of the candidates to give Shragis, 
According to this narrative, the Apostle Thomas gives them anointing, baptism, and the Eucharist in a single celebration. We can assert this without doubt because in the third narrative, after having given the anointing, baptism, and Eucharist, the Apostle says to Magdalene, Thou hast now received the signs. In the first and second narrative, the use of the substantive scribes does not seem to be homogeneous. One finds it difficult to determine whether scribes are present of the whole celebration of the initiation rite. Thus, inside the first narrative, if the text 1, it is chapter 26, q 1, indicates clearly the meaning of scribes to describe the whole of the rite of initiation, in the second text of the same narrative, the aforesaid signification is disturbed because the editor or author places a seal in the same level with the Eucharist and the blessing of the Lord, thus inviting us to consider that they are distinct liturgical celebration. This we find in the response of Judas to the candidates who ask for striking. I am also delighted and I ask you to receive this seal and to participate with me in this Eucharist and in this blessing of the Lord. Since the Greek versions of the first narrative does not have any reference to baptism or to water, in text 3, Spagius could be considered only in relation to anointing, especially in the light of the phrase, so that by the oil they receive the seed. In text 5, the signification of Spagius could be understood only in reference to the meaning implied in Episphragisma, because the expression is Episphragisma de Spagidos. If we consider the textual context of the expression Episphragisma de Spagidos, we find that it is related to the invocation addressed to the Holy Spirit, who is invoked using imperative form of the word upon the candidates, purify Catholicism, their plans and their thoughts, and imprint your seal upon them. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In the light of the study and the analysis of all five narratives in Acts of Thomas, we will be convinced that the lack of homogeneity for the meaning and signification of the substantive Swagis in the narrative first is due to a greater interpolation of a Greek editor who understood Swagis only for anointing. And he, can, and he coined a new expression, Episphagisma Thesphagidos, in order to designate the theological effect that the Holy Spirit imparts as an imprint or indeliberate form, as a result of anointing. Similarly, the same editor who considers Swagis only for anointing was obliged to add an explanatory phrase in the narrative, which is absence in version, by the oil they received the Swagis. In the second narrative, the substantive Swagis appears twice and once in chapter 51, where the celebration of the second narrative is referred to. Among these three occurrences, Swagis in chapter 49 stands for the whole celebration of the rite of initiation because the requesting phrase, give me the seed, is common in all the narratives to denote the totality of the celebration of the rite of initiation. However, the second narrative of Greek version hampers the comprehension of the exact meaning of the concept of Swagis. This is because in this narrative we do not find any reference to oil or to water. That means no allusion to anointing or baptism, but simply to an imposition of hands at the time of the act called Swagiso, which is accompanied by a printer in format. Comparing to other narratives, the problematic of the second narrative in Greek verse is the dilemma in Germany the liturgical and theological content of Swagis. If only the meaning of Swagis in text 1 is determined, determined, one can interpret the signification of the Swagis in text 3 and 4. However, the problematic reveals that Swagis does not indicate in second narrative exclusively to anointing or baptism. The writers give me the Swagis or let me receive Swagis where Swagi is always in similar form, is seen unanimously in the five narratives of the question, and to which the Apostle Thomas responds by a theoretical celebration, the content of which is anointing, baptism, Eucharist. Only in the first and second narratives, we find the content carries some amendments by the final critic. Actually, the meaning, of, the meaning representing the whole celebration of initiation, right, predominates 
was Sprangis in the corpus of the Greek verse. Now the word Sprangiso. The word Sprangiso appears only in the first and second narratives. We have already discussed about the problematic of the use of Sprangis in the first two narratives and in the three texts. Where Sprangiso appears, its liturgical and theological meaning does not seem to be homogeneous. This is because of the amendments of the final editor who favors the meaning of anointing to Sprangis. Therefore, in the light of the study and analysis of the five narratives, we assume that the meaning of the act of Sprangiso referred to in the beginning of the first narrative is making a sign of the cross, while the same act referred to later, the text 27, of the same narrative signifies an anointing. With regard to the liturgical act represented by Sprangiso in the second narrative, we have already pointed out its association with the Trinitarian formula and which is the only reference in the entire corpus of Acts of Thomas. We lack proofs to conclude whether Sprangiso in this text refers to an anointing or a baptism or to the sign of the cross. Nevertheless, we perceive that it refers to the sign of the cross taking into consideration the exorcistic character of the second narrative and comparing this narrative with that of Syriac version where a baptismal context prevails. The probability of attributing an anointing to Sprangiso is much less by all means in the second narrative of the version. Now, Epistrangisma. The only one occurrence of the substantive Epistrangisma in the whole of Acts Thomas is seen in that compound expression Epistrangisma des Sprangidos of the first narrative. The end or aim of this expression is coupled again with the only one instance of the word Epistrangiso in the same narrative. The liturgical and theological meaning of Epistrangisma and Epistrangiso the two words that appear in the same narrative where one finds also Sprangis and Sprangiso can be understood only in relation to the latter terms Sprangis and Sprangiso before coming to a conclusion let us see also Epistrangiso, the word. The only occurrence of the word Epistrangiso which is associated with the common expression Epistrangis, not the Sprangilos, is in accord with the Epiclesis prayer that follows the act of pouring oil upon the head of the candidates. The request to imprint the seal, if it's not so, is addressed with Holy Spirit. And therefore, the act designated by the word, if it's not so, has pneumatological character. And the objective of the act is to receive a pneumatological effect. Besides, the textual analysis shows that the subject of the word, if it's not so, is Holy Spirit. Whereas the subject of the word Sprangiso is the apostle who is the minister of the celebration. It is the theological understanding of the minister of the liturgical celebration implicit in this narrative and explains the signification of the only one occurrence of the word Episprangiso in the Corpus of Acts of Thomas. And from this follows the theological meaning of that common expression Episprangis Mates Sprangilos the imprint of the seal that Holy Spirit passed upon the candidate for anointing. That is, the candidate becomes the anointed by the mark of the Holy Spirit. Chapters 11 and 12 of my local book dedicated to the study of the text of the Epiclesis in the Thomas reveal the rheumatological emphasis developing slowly in the text where, whereas it was the Christological accentuation that predominated in the entire corpus of Acts of Thomas. According to our analysis and our study of the historical text in Acts of Thomas, we can trace the hand of a later Greek editor who wants to update certain liturgical texts in Acts of Thomas. He does it in order to tune the text with the theological thinking of the time regarding the role of the Holy Spirit in the celebration of the mystery. And the result is his addition of a new formulation of his Pragis Mathes Pragidos for the rheumatological intellectual character and the formulation of a new word, Epistrangi. So, the addition of this formulation does help the final editor to confine the meaning of Sprangis and Sprangis so to anointing in these narratives, whereas in other narratives of Acts of Thomas, Sprangis stands for the theological content of the whole celebration of the initiation rite. After having examined the Greek terms and words related to Sprangis, let us compare them with the Syriac text containing Rushma. The term Rushma of the Syriac verse 
This is the Rushma used consistently in the five narratives of the Slave version is never associated exclusively to oil, therefore an oily, nor to Paris. Similarly, no verbal form of rasam, the sign, is used in the five narratives in the context of oil. Therefore, there is no verbal form of rasam, the sign, to describe any act of anointing with oil or to speak of any act related to baptism in the five narratives. The substantive rushma and any forms of the word rasam are also not given with the preparatory formula used in the celebration of the station by. In short, there is neither any rhetorical confusion nor any inconsistency in the use of Rushma in the purpose of acts of thumbs. Rushma signifies always the whole celebration of the initiation rite in the Syrian version. As a result of the study of the terms and the words related to Rushma in the Syrian version, and the slides in the Greek version, we could recognize evidently the initial hand of the author of the Acts of Thomas, for whom the concept of Rushma stands for the whole celebration of life of initiation in which anointing, baptism, Eucharist is given together, understanding them as the one and the one, the only celebration. This meaning of Rushma is modified by another Frankish is uh, modified by other heritage text interpolation and amendment which he did in view of the theoretical and theological updating of certain past generalities. This theoretical and theological updating points to the fact that Acts of Thomas was a living text. Now the hundred theological purpose of Sai, this and Rushma. The substantive Rushma is never used outside the context of initiation by and its presence is always related to the verb receive or give. This we find in the formula of demand addressed to the apostle by the candidates. Thus the formula often is give me or give us the Rushma spines or that I will receive the Rushma or spines. It means that Rushma is understood as a gift received from God to the ministry of the apostles. The concept of Rushma encompasses a specific and a theological meaning for the shape and content of the whole liturgical celebration of initiation that comprises of anointing, baptism, and Eucharist. Even though two narratives show divergences, taking into account the spirit of the author of the Greek version, we consider that Smiley's carries also the same theological meaning that the Bushma. To understand the specific use of Bushma and its theological content in Acts of Thomas, we have to consider the following points. The liturgical and theological meaning of Rushma in Acts of Thomas differs from the general understanding that we conceive today to Rushma. Today Rushma is understood for pre-baptism anointing and Putama for post-baptism anointing. The latter was introduced towards the end of the 4th century in the liturgical practice of Syrian churches. Besides, let us note that Syrian liturgical tradition uses also the name Masihuta, anointing for pre-baptism anointing of the body of the candidate. When we read the straight version of Acts of Thomas, we meet with some other specific words or expressions to describe the totality of the initiation rite, but they are not seen in all narratives as Rushma. Rushma is present in all the narratives to represent the totality of the initiation. The other words or expressions are mysteries, the severe expression, the glorious mysteries, and the Greek is mysteria. The use of the term mysteries in Acts of Thomas is not confined to one meaning of representing the totality of the initiation. Instead, the five narratives we meet with this term at different occasions. Thus, in the big places prior of first narrative, come revealer of hidden mysteries. In the big places prior of second narrative, come revealer of the mysteries of the one who is tested by the prophets. Come the one who knows the mysteries of the character. In the third narrative, the hidden mystery of the cross. In Greek version of the fourth narrative, we invoke upon thee the name of the mother of the ineffable mystery of ours. In some days, 82 and 136 is my mystery. So when we examine the entire text of Acts of Thomas, therefore, we find in a few context of term mysteries in plural of Greek version and Rasai of Syriac version, glorious mysteries, divine mysteries and holy mysteries, also designates the initiation rite, but not as a technical term that we see for Rushma. A second category of terms is, are the gifts of thy gifts, the perfect good of thy graces and gifts. 
These expressions are also not used as particular terms in all the narratives as we see in regard to Ushma Swami. Now, what is theological purpose? There are Christological belongingness, I am not going to explain in this time. Then, ecclesiological belongingness. The ecclesiological belongingness are explained through different metaphors. That is, to become the servant of the Lord, to be recognized as a sheep, as sheep of the God and to be counted in the work of God, to be protected and to be freed from the assaults of the enemy, to become a holy temple so that God may give there and now the conclusion. The Rushma Swami's prayers a specific meaning and that meaning is exceptional in Acts of Thomas. The Rushma or Swami's in Acts of Thomas means the whole rite of initiation which is represented by the celebration of the anointing, baptism, Eucharist as one unit. This specificity is clearly highlighted in the second verse of Acts of Thomas where Rushma does not mean nothing other than the whole of Christian initiation. Thank you very much. Thank you. We welcome His Grace to, uh, Thomas Mark Athanasius from uh, the Orthodox Syrian Church in Enganur, Tennessee. He is sent to uh, build the palace for Nicholas. There he marks the plan, and that marking is personal. There are only two usages of the word custom in Rushma is a synonym for baptism. Rushma is the name for sacraments of initiation. Anointing, baptism, Eucharist, together called Rushma. Thank you very much again.